McElroy of Food for Fuel. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to set my timer here because I have a tendency to go a little long. So I'm going to keep an eye on this a little bit. But good morning. Uh, uh, thanks for having me here. I was here uh, at the other building, like Alex said, um, I think that was a little about a year and a half ago. And that was when Food for Fuel had just got rebirthed. We had just started Food for Fuel back up again, and I'll share a little bit about that. Um, give you a little backstory on myself. Um, make sure I got this thing. I got to fire it back up here real quick. I'm sorry. Okay. Here we go. So real quick backstory on myself. Uh, I am from a little town called Baldwinsville, New York, in upstate New York. It's similar to a Loves Park, and um, it's right outside Syracuse, New York, which is similar to a Rockford, Illinois. So I've been here for 23 years. I was born and raised in uh, little Baldwinsville, uh, married my high school sweetheart back there. Um, unfortunately, she was my high school sweetheart. I wasn't her high school sweetheart. So I was one of those guys that was victim of the friend deal, you know. So we were friends, and uh, it wasn't until after high school when we had gotten together, but we've been married for 26 years. We relocated and moved here. We've been here for 23 years. Uh, we're going on 26 years this summer. We celebrated 25 years last summer. But um, we have three kids, and down here, you can't see my littlest one, but um, this is an old picture. We're big Pittsburgh Steelers fans. We used to go to all the Steelers training camps in Latrobe, uh, uh, and had a great time with that. Met Coach Tomlin the first year that he had become a coach there. And uh, those are some great memories that our family has um, of going to Steelers camp. This is Big Jimmy, and this is Healthy Jimmy. And so I have gone on uh, this thing where some people have lost, you know, 100 plus pounds before in, you know, in, in one run. Um, I've lost 100 plus pounds before probably 15, 20 times. 10 pounds here, 5 pounds here, 10 pounds here, 11 pounds here, and just like this yo, 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 yo thing. So my wife and I, um, and that's my wife over there, at our healthiest, we had uh, started a health conscious journey several years ago, and we combined with my oldest son had lost 69 pounds in 90 days. So what happened was we realized at that point that we had an unhealthy, before that point, um, we realized that we had an unhealthy relationship with food, and we wanted to improve that for ourselves and for our family. And so we got on this journey, and we really got after it. And again, this is the worst that I uh, was. I was probably about 225, 230 there. And then this was um, a healthier version of me when I was working out very regularly over at Maximum Performance, uh, one of our uh, community partners. And um, this was uh, several years ago. Now I am closer to this. I'm not, I'm not over here anymore. So, but I've gone just, you know, like this uh, on a regular basis, up and down, up and down, up and down. But what happened was after we uh, went on this journey and we had lost uh, almost 70 pounds in the 90 days, again, we realized that there was um, here in Rockford uh, at that time, we were the number uh, four most obese city in the country. Let's see here. Okay. And so what we want in the metropolitan city in the country, and we wanted to be a difference maker. We wanted to um, share what we had learned uh, of changing the way that we looked at food and looked at food for fuel instead of consuming for comfort, which I used to do. I consumed for comfort. I consumed for convenience. And, you know, it's easy when we're tired, when we're anxious, when we're nervous, when we're depressed, when we're angry to just go to something of comfort. And a lot of times food is that, you know, thing. And it was for me quite often. And so um, I realized that I needed to switch that and look at food as fuel for my body because truthfully, that's what it is. Um, and every time we consume something, we're either helping our bodies or we're hurting our bodies. There's not really a whole lot of in between, you know. And so that's something that we've had to uh, wrestle with ourselves. And then we wanted to share it. So where we started, December 13th, 2013, 
Um, got together with a, a bunch of community leaders that were in the health and wellness already that own gyms. Mike Zonheiser was there from Maximum Performance. From day one, when I talked to him about getting this thing going, he was excited about it. He was encouraging and, you know, and was just super stoked about having this be a solution for people that were coming to his gym, that they would also have that other side of it, which is the, the nutrition side of it, and not just the exercise. Now they got the one-two combo and can really have great success. Success. So he was in the room there. Um, we started at a restaurant. It was an idea and a restaurant that um, was not at maximum capacity and had slowed their business down. I went to the owner and the chef and said, hey, I got this idea. I want to do this meal prep stuff and make little individual meals that are portion controlled and nutritionally dense that people can just grab and go. We can meet the fast paced world. We can solve the problem for um, Rockford being one of the you know most obese cities in the country. We can reverse that. At the time, 72.85% of the middle school students were overweight or obese. I'm like, that's not cool. We got to do something about that. And we can be a part of change. So that's where we put together uh, the, the food and the meal prepping. And um, so what happened was, um, and you should ask me at some point what our fo first logo looked like. Um, actually, you can ask me now if you want. Okay, thanks. So um, I appreciate you walking right into that for me. <laughs> but um, so this is what our first logo looked like. The whole idea was behind a like a, a you know an odometer and fueling our body and I was there and I was working with my graphics guy and we were coming up with some we had done a hundred and something uh, revisions of this so the logo went through a transformation just like myself and my family went through a transformation so the logo started off here it went here. This is what it was for a couple of years. This is just what it was, that first presentation. And I actually, Mikey, I have a copy of um, the first presentation that I had showed you guys. Um, but this is the logo that was there at first. And then it, it evolved, it evolved. And then this is the current logo that we have now. And the, uh, um, the tag, which we wear proudly and we share proudly. And we just really want to be a part of helping Rockford or any other local city become a top 25 healthiest place to live by 2025. And we know that we have the ability to do that. And when we look at when we first started um, five, about five years ago, again, Rockford was the number four most obese city in the country. Now it's up around 10, 11. So it's not, it's not down here. It's going to take a while for the pendulum to really uh, swing but we can be a positive part of that. Our vehicles, uh, we also knew that we needed to make our food accessible to people. So not only people that come and get it, not only people that go to gyms, um, but uh, the, we wanted to make sure that we can get it to people who wanted it as easily as possible. So again, when you think of that most of the time we eat for you know, the comfort and the convenience, we thought if we could take healthy food and make it convenient and make it comfortable, then we can help people win on their health conscious journey. We, we picked this uh, first vehicle up from LifeScape. Uh, just saw it driving down the road and uh, one day and I called there and I said, hey, I would love to buy one of your old vehicles if you ever needed. And so a couple of months later, they said, hey, we got an old vehicle if you want to come and look at it. And it was kind of beat up, but uh, I had my mechanic go and look at it and he said, oh, Jimmy, I can get this thing fixed for you. I'm like, let's do it. So we started off with that. It, we, the first wrap, old logo, was black, and then since then, again, transformation of vehicles, evolution of our business, and now we've got four vehicles, uh, three of them are food trucks um, with the hot box and the cold box in the back for catering and for delivering food, um, and then we've got a, a van there too. We have struggled a lot in our business. And that's, that is the reality of the same thing with our health conscious journeys. Uh, this up and down thing, that's just how life goes. That's how business goes. That's how relationship goes. And yes, you know, we see all these graphs and charts of, you know, success goes like this. It, and we've also hopefully seen the ones where it goes like this. You know, and um, success, we, we really can define our own success. Um, I like to think sometimes of success is just keep on going. I mean, success is just trying again and trying again and trying again. Because if you don't try again and keep on going, you are failing because you quit. Right? So there's a point where, and that doesn't mean that um, uh, necessarily exactly what you're doing. Sometimes we do something and we realize, man, maybe that's not what I should be doing. Maybe I should be heading in a different direction. So... We had a couple of challenges. When we first started, the business grew pretty quickly. 
uh, in January 2014 is when we first started. But then it was at about September when the restaurant that we were working in had let me know that he was no longer going to continue his restaurant and was you know, going to be shutting it down and closing the doors. So I basically had about four weeks to figure out what I was going to do, where I was going to go. And, um, and we started this business r- literally with about 10 bucks and an idea. So uh, that's what it was. And, and it was just something that just we, we got that momentum going. In business, I think there's three things. The hardest thing you know, in a business is, to, is the startup, right, to get it going. Um, but then you got that second phase, which is the momentum phase. And you got to get that momentum going. And it's not until you get solid momentum that you can get into a sustainable place. And so we've had a little bit of a challenge with that because we've gotten going and got momentum and then we've had to, you know, uh, kind of restart up. When we moved, um, fortunately, I, I won't share everything with you because it's a really long story, but we were super fortunate that we were welcomed into Carlson Ice Arena, uh, uh, um, a Rockford Park District property. And they had kitchen space in there that was being underutilized. Uh, they have concessions in the front, and in the back was a whole catering kitchen that there was about five different people that had been in there, uh, food you know, vendors that had been in there and out of there in a short period of time. So it was underutilized. And for us, we don't have, like, walk-by customers. Our customers are intentional about wanting to um, do business with Food for Fuel, so it doesn't really matter where we are. Um, They're going to find us if they are on a health conscious journey or want to be on a health conscious journey. Um, So the location doesn't matter so much. For us, that was great, and we moved into there. Uh, We did it in about a weekend, and then we had to start production. So we didn't stop production at all, Um, but the hard part was that we lost our number one chef we lost our cook. And so we had to refigure out how to do it. And I've never been in the food business per se before. So I've just been in the business business. Um, I've owned several businesses in town. Um, uh, And I forgot to mention that, but like Rockford Ice Hogs, Revved Up, Bruin Electronics, Front Porch Marketing, Diverse Marketing Concepts, a few different businesses. Everything that I have been involved in are things that I've all wanted to be a positive impact in the community. And I've had some setbacks even before this. With September 11th, I lost all three of our businesses. And uh, uh, we lost our house. We lost everything. Had to start all over again. And so um, uh, September 11th, 2001. So have had you know several uh, setbacks. This was just a, another one of them. We also tried, has anybody ever seen, um, this was quite a while ago, but this is, a, it's a hard image to see. Um, at, I think it was called Fusion Sports Club, uh, where they do volleyball and basketball. It's over in Loves Park. Uh, we set up, um, we wanted to do a healthy concession there because we see all the unhealthy concession and it's kind of you know backwards when you have athletes going to perform and people going to watch athletes perform but yet we're going and getting all this unhealthy stuff you know it just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense so we wanted to have the proper stuff there to fuel people so we did this um, concession thing and uh, it didn't pan out quite the way that we had hoped. Uh, there wasn't quite the uh, amount of people coming through there that we had anticipated. And, um, and there was also just a few other dynamics. But what also happened was I had elected to have a total knee replacement that I needed for over seven years. I'm 48 years old now. Uh, but I, at the time I had this, was, it was uh, 2015, May 27th, 2015. At the time, I thought my business was doing okay and that it would be fine and sustainable. Well, what I found is my knee surgery was really, really bad. Uh, It was my third surgery. It took a long time to recover. Um, So as I was sitting uh, on the couch on pain meds and trying to recover, my business was um, quickly going backwards. And so uh, what I, you know, what we found is that, you know, we built a team of people and we built it up and we really grew the business. A lot of the people that were in the business were not Um, capable of running the business, but we're very capable of doing things in the business. And so I learned that, you know, the hard way. There are people that are friends of ours. Most of them still work for us now when we, when we came back. Um, But this was a really tough time, and uh, it, it was a, a huge challenge uh, mentally and physically. I tried to get back into the kitchen 
really quickly. I was putting ice packs on it. I was wrapping it around. I was throwing my knee up on, I'd put a stool here, and I'm on the grill cooking 200 pounds of chicken, and then I have to deliver it, you know, all, a lot of these meals to 14 different places, and I'm walking into some of these schools and delivering. I'm walking into some of these gyms. I just couldn't do it. And when I'd go to my doc and be like, doc, my knee is killing me, he'd be like, well, no kidding. You, you, you got to get off of it. You can't be doing what you're doing. And so really it came down to the point where it was either going to be, you know, a, a really long-term, you know, uh, effect and I'd have to have, you know, more surgeries quicker or I had to get my mind right. And um, so I ended up taking a job here in town and uh, with, uh, I did an outreach director position with Oak Street Health down the road. I took that because part of my mission is to, again, try to help improve the health of the community. And I was able to, with that, I needed a job. I needed to, you know, be able to take care of my family. And business had gone down to, like, close to nothing because I wasn't, you know, still active in it. Um, and so I had to recover. And so I had to go and take a job. And then uh, I, I really was happy about the position that I was in with uh, outreach. And so um, that, was a, uh, that was a good time. I also learned an awful lot about as I went into a lot of these sky rise buildings because Oak Street Health works with uh, older adults on Medicare uh, and um, I realized that there's a lot of uh, folks that need help, you know. So one of the things that we did, uh, we started this thing called grab and go where people can come in and purchase meals right out of the refrigerator. Here's a bunch of our meals. They're portion controlled, nutritionally dense, ready to go. You just reheat them and eat them. We've partnered up with a bunch of community partners. Um, there's Carly Rice down there. Some of you may have heard of Carly. Officer Thurman up here. We put a refrigerator downtown, a big double door refrigerator, and we put meals in there to feed the homeless and the underserved people that come into these houses, um, uh, into Carly's house. Uh, you can see the fridge back here. Um, we load that up with meals for the underserved. We take some of the profits it's from the front end of the people who can afford our business, and we pass it on to the back end with people who can't afford our business. Um, Fred Van Fleet, Corey Anderson, Ugo, Angel, these are some athletes here in town that uh, use our product. We do catering. We do big events. Um, we did the Jamie Cox. We were a sponsor of that, and we just had a fuel station. We just had bananas and waters, stuff like that. We just really want to be a part of the community. Um, this, uh, this catering we did at the winery, this picture down on the bottom is a pretty cool picture of um, a group of us that got started on what we call a 21-day sprint to confidence. What a 21-day sprint to confidence is, is we tried to take everything and narrow it down and say, all right, for 21 days, let's drink more water, less of everything else. Let's eat more real food, less of everything else. Let's exercise more, sit around less, and let's do it together as a community, as a group of people that are like-minded. And what we did is people like uh, Maximum Performance, Anytime Fitness, The Y, Peak Sports Club, Precision Sports, movement fitness, Orange Theory, all these places open up their gym to us that we can bring people and get a different workout at a different gym. And we bring people into this group and give them a chance to get exposure to a different gym. Uh, but it also helps people on their health conscious journey. And it was really all around one kid. We started it around this kid right here. And you guys may have seen him. He was the uh, inspiring 815 award recipient recently. His name's Ethan Taylor. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit about Ethan in just a second. Um, I want to just quickly share our uh, growth. This is in 2014 when we started. In 15, we had a 40% increase, which was beautiful. Keep in mind, I had my surgery in May uh, 27th, 2015. Um, so our majority of our business was front-loaded, and then from about June, July, we just tanked through December. So we had, we're looking at a really good growth year. So then in 2016, I had to shut the business down, unfortunately. So that was a tough thing, and of course, that was a very tough thing, right? So here comes the other challenge of what are we going to do? Are we going to restart this thing, or are we not? My passion has always been in this, doing something important in our community, making an impact in our community. And so while I had that job at Oak Street Health, um, my wife and my son and I, we all decided that we were going to get the business started again. So I was full-time at Oak Street Health and full-time in the kitchen from, uh, was just about 
January, uh, actually not just about, it was from January 2017 until May 7th when I resigned. I gave him about a five-month notice at my job, and then it was full-time, full-time into the kitchen uh, from May until the end of the year. And then here we are at a projected 24% increase this year over last year, which was a phenomenal year. It just tells us how many people we're serving in the community, and we're uh, super passionate about it. So this is the young man I wanted to share with you. Ethan, if you'd come up here real quick. <clears throat> and um, Ethan, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, Alex. We actually need the microphone today with that thing going on. <laughs> yeah, right, thank you. So, uh, and by the way, I am sorry, I forgot. I got a little gift here for you. This is uh, one of our uh, nice cups and one of our wristbands. It has the 25 by 2025 on it. Be inspired, be inspiring. And our rock famous peanut butter bite. So uh, everybody loves those. It's got a little peanut butter, a little honey, a little protein powder, a uh, little flaxseed, um, some vanilla extract in there. I got a card in there. So we're going to give one of these to everybody uh, after. Okay. Ethan, so we met, uh, we've known each other for a little while. We sat down and met January of 2018. How much did you weigh at that time? Uh, in January, I weighed 368 pounds, which is when I sat down with Jim. And we kind of did like a talk. It was me, him, and my mom, my two brothers. And we just talked about what my goals were because I needed serious change. Because in January, I was going through some real tough stuff. I had a back injury that I suffered in July of 2017. And it caused me to drop out of college because I couldn't walk to class, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sit, I couldn't do anything. And so I dropped out and my health really plummeted, not just physically, but mentally. And I was a really bad spot. And so we talked about what we can do to get the ball rolling and kind of change my life. And so that was in January. And, and how much have you lost since then? Uh, uh, since January, I've lost 115 pounds. This year. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. As it's amazing. And when we sat down, it was about the pain that was in his mind and in his body that he shared. And I knew it. And I was like, we can, we can definitely help. You just got to be ready. And if you're really ready, like ready, ready, let's put you out there so you can inspire other people. And he's like, I'm all about that. I want to wear one of these shirts one day. I want to be a part of that. I love what you're doing. I want to, you know. So he has inspired so many people. We get messages all the time that, of people that have followed his journey and have been inspired by. It. And it really comes down to a couple of simple things. Sometimes Ethan will tell me too, like I'll check in on him. He's, oh, I had a bad weekend. I'm like, what's a bad weekend? And he'd tell me what a bad weekend is. I'm like, buddy, that's not even close to what a bad good day used to be for you 112 pounds ago. So it's okay every once in a while, you know, and we're not just like saying we're giving a green light to going crazy, but we, we still live. We still have birthday parties every once in a while. So what we like to say all the time is we want to be 80%, uh, we want to do really well with eating healthy and feeding our body, fueling our body. And then the 20% when we're off a little bit, when we're having family over, when we're going out to eat, let's just be 80% better than what we used to be. So if we do that, you're going to win. And when our body feels better, our mind feels better, so much things, you know, transform, right? So one of the big things, uh, Anytime Fitness was wonderful and gave um, Ethan a place, a home base. He's been to all different gyms in the community, uh, but they gave him a home base to work out at. And he's had uh, great success there with them. Uh, and then what he's also done is inspired his brother. And I just want to show you the difference here. The difference in the hairdo is a big, big deal. Big deal. And the reason why, I'll let you share. Okay, so yeah, that's my older brother, Zach. And you know, he's gone through a lot of stuff in his life and he's really, really just a strong kid. And uh, the hair, why it might not seem like much to people who don't know him, it's a huge deal to me and my family. He's hearing impaired and he's very self-conscious about his hearing aids. And so to just like have the confidence to be able to cut his hair, he kept it long so, so that he, people wouldn't see it and people wouldn't know. So to just like lose, he's lost 50 pounds this year, 54 I think exactly, and so I'm super proud of him, but I'm super proud that he's coming out of a shell too, and just like the, that he has the confidence to cut his hair and be like, yeah, okay, I'm hearing impaired, but what does, what does that matter? It just means the world to me, so I'm super proud of him. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, so that's part of the whole, as we feel better about ourselves and we gain confidence, and when we're eating to fuel our body, it's good for us. When we're eating com for comfort, it's not usually good for us. So again, that's why Food for Fuel exists. We just want to be there to be a part of uh, people's health-conscious journey. 
Um, and that really is uh, the food for fuel story. I tried to, I, there's a whole lot more, I promise you that, but I tried to just share it as quick as I possibly could there. Yeah. Um, th well, all right, let's give everybody, give Ethan you. a hand. Thanks, give Jim Ethan. a hand. All right, so since everybody's been here, except for one, we, we asked our three.